just a couple days ago, we were talking about how we might have to cancel the honeymoon. If you don't have parents that's gonna pay for the wedding, you gotta take that alone. Be mindful of the fact that it's just 24 hours. Something so much more valuable like a honeymoon, investing. Paid $50 for like four months to be able to afford a wedding gift to each other. My first item has been bought for my wedding registry. So I got a $250 wine fridge. I got a nose job for my wedding. Um, couples who spend more than $20,000 on their wedding are 46% more likely to get divorced. People that love you, really, really love you, are gonna love whatever you decide to do, whatever is gonna be meaningful to you. Hey guys, welcome back to More to Life. Now, before I get into this video, I ask that you like, comment, subscribe. Also, smash that notification bell just to be sure you get on my videos as soon as I release them. Let's get right into this. Okay, guys, this is my $35,000 wedding update. We are 36 days out exactly from the wedding last week i said that we were good we had enough money for the for the wedding for the honeymoon we were on cloud nine and then just a couple days ago we were talking about how we might have to cancel the honeymoon because we might not have enough money i cannot live within my means when we're looking at a location outside of the u.s it's going to be more expensive right so right now our honeymoon is costing us six thousand dollars no you get a location out of the u.s that should be cheaper well, hey, who am I? I don't know. I'm not playing it. I know usually you do those locations outside of the U.S. They charge you a higher price because you're coming from the U.S. But more women going broke just for weddings. It's crazy. This is about our £20,000 worth of debt. So sit down, brace yourselves while I tell you what's in it. I don't even want to know myself when I look into it. So we've got about eleven, twelve thousand pounds worth of loan that's for our wedding that we got married in 2022. Both of us say now, like, if it was to do it again, we just wouldn't do what we did. The problem was, I had a really good wedding planner and I told her everything that I wanted and then she came back and she was like, right, that's £60,000. And we were like, what? But... To be fair, I got it down and we ended up paying like, I think about £28,000 for our wedding, which is like an awful lot of money, but I've heard people spend so much more on their weddings. So yeah, we've got £12,000 left to pay on our wedding and then, then we've got like £7,000 worth of credit card debt between us both, but they're both a 0%, so I'm not as bothered about them. And then another impulsive buy last year, we have got the lovely sofa that I'm sat on that we still haven't paid for yet. And then I booked a holiday and we didn't have the money to pay it off at the end of the month and 12 months later we still haven't paid it off wow why did you book a holiday like you know like if you have a wedding i gotta tell you guys what happened i had a wedding with my wife my wedding house out here in the philippines was so inexpensive guys when i say night and day com compared to weddings in the west but i was so at peace i'll tell you me and my wife we planned the wedding ourselves. yes I mean, every single detail from the tuxedos down to the dresses. We had a wedding planner for the wedding day. But as far as everything, event, venue, we took care of it all. We paid for the bride's dresses, the bridesmaids, everything. And overall, it probably cost us a little under 3000 Maybe a little more than that when you count extra costs. But still, yeah, a little around 3000 it's not bad. That's how much you paid. Now, you already heard some of the prices. They're saying it's expensive. Now, I'll tell you this. If you suggest one of those women, hey, how about we go out to the Philippines and have a wedding? The first thing they would do is judge and say, I'm not going to that country. Not knowing it's one of the most beautiful places to be. But that happens with modern women. That's why they're spending so much. This is how rancid the wedding industry can be. From 2018 to 2020, I spent $20,000 on one specific wedding professional educational group. I was sucked in. It was sparkle and glitter. I hate being responsible. I had the same plan. I was like, yeah, alone for a wedding? Of course, that's how everyone pays it, right? If you don't have parents, excuse the dog in the background, my neighbor's dog. If you don't have parents that's gonna pay for the wedding, you gotta take that alone. Huh? That's just how it goes. What is wrong with us? Why are we willing to take out 20K, 10K plus loans for 
Yeah. Only then. It's the same reason why a lot of women take out those loans for college. They feel it's something they need, and then they get out of college and they come home, and the only thing available is a job paying 14, 15 bucks an hour. It's crazy. And they're stuck with that job to pay back their student loan debt. The same thing happens for weddings. I recently heard that some people were going into debt for their weddings. I don't know. I didn't know that was a thing. Where like a decent wedding low key can cost like 20,000. And I feel like that's, I mean, it's a decent budget, but it's not a ton of money and it's not like no money. You know what I'm saying? It is 20,000 can cover it, but always little things. People get out of hand, buy things they really don't need. And it's a nightmare. I recently saw a girl on TikTok talk about her dream wedding dress. This is a bride on a huge budget. I see all these weddings on TikTok and I'm just like, this is really overwhelming and I just don't have a budget for this. So it gets really depressing sometimes. I found my dream dress recently. I haven't tried it on. I wanna go to LA and try it on. I reached out to them through an email just to kind of get a good idea of how much it is. I, mm, I, it's just not in my budget. I just can't afford that. It is like $8,000 because it's a custom dress and it is the most stunning thing ever. I'll show it right here. It's stunning. Yeah, usually things that appeal to the eye don't appeal to the wallet. They just don't. It's the same thing. Like, say, you look at a uh, a Gucci or a Fendi bag or something like that. It's so appealing. Watching that Gucci shirt, you know, just knowing it's Gucci, just because you know what it is, it feels good, it's appealing, but it's not affordable, not something you should be having. Back in 2016, me and my husband took out a $20,000 loan in order to help pay for our wedding. And every single time that I bring it up, TikTok has something to say about it. So if you're curious, this is the full story. Me and my husband got engaged back in 2015 and we were working full time in the fitness industry and we were fully aware that our parents were not going to be helping us financially with our wedding, but we got engaged and we decided that we were just going to figure out how to come up with over $45,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. <laughs> We were also completely ignorant of our financial situation and we decided that whatever we weren't able to save in the year and a half time that we were engaged, that we were just going to take a loan out for the rest. During the time that we were engaged, we had a lot of unfortunate financial circumstances happen to us. And on top of that, we weren't really financially savvy people. So in the end, we were unable to come up with all the money. So we did go to our local bank and got a personal loan. That personal loan was incredibly easy to obtain. We had great credit. We had great employee history and we also made decent money. But that was also the catalyst to our current financial situation because it was the first time that me and my husband actually took a cold hard look at what our financial life was like and that pushed us into the direction that we're in right now. We had so many goals and so many things that we wanted to achieve financially and that was just not going to be possible living the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle that we had been up until that point. So although I would never recommend anybody to ever take out a loan and this is not financial advice, it was the exact moment that my husband and I realized that something needed to change. You know, the way she said it, she said it like they were good with everything. I don't think you were so good because at the end, it sounded like you ended up living paycheck to paycheck. That's something you should have thought about as you were getting married. Like the smart thing to do is not have that dream wedding because the wedding you're having for other people to smile. You could take pictures on your own, do something solid, right? Have your family over, go get married at the, at the courthouse and then, you know, have a get together for the uh, after party. Do something simple, right? Everybody was, oh, that wedding was so cheap. Do you care? You married the man you love. We got to bring it back to the simple days, right? Because like what I went through, this is U.S. we're talking about. 
people are not saying they paid three thousand for everything. People are paying twenty, getting a twenty thousand dollar loan. You know you can't afford that. I could afford a twenty thousand loan, but do I want to? Really? Do I really want a twenty thousand dollar loan right now? I don't think so. I don't think anybody does. I think a twenty thousand dollar loan will hurt a lot of people. Not a smart decision. I'm absolutely like so frustrated by the wedding industry. It is literally the wedding industry is price gouging. It's so inflated, just like everything else is. My 2024 bride who's trying to bring some transparency to the financial part of planning a wedding. Going into planning, we set a budget for 25,000. That looked realistic to us. And by our surprise, we are about to ring in at about 40,000. That's a lot of money. There are so many people who judge and say, you know, this is irresponsible. We didn't know that this was going to happen. It creeps up on you. There's so many hidden costs. And part of the reason I'm making this video right sure now is about to show that? people where all that's coming from and why it's so much so that people can avoid this if they want to, or at least have knowledge that I didn't have when I was planning one. One of the biggest costs that you'll encounter is the dress. So I had to make two different deposits for this one that were both almost a thousand dollars. And that is including alterations, which was a deal. So I did still get a deal. There. Obviously our venue, we had to split this out. It was three sets of 4,000. 200 so total obviously we are paying about i think it was like twelve thousand five hundred, and that was including like tables chairs um linens decorations a lot of the stuff is being done by the venue and that was an extremely good deal for that price so that's something to note and here is probably the thing that people don't realize is your vendors are what are going to cost you most this is an insane price for how many guests we have. We have about $400 for a cake and all like cupcakes and everything. That's an insane amount for what we're getting. So then this is 25,000. So I'm like, okay, like we didn't go over budget. Well, I remembered that we had to pay all the second halves of the deposits and these are what's left on all of these things. So we do have things in there like our damage deposit, which we will hopefully get back. Um, and once we tally all of that up, that is what we have left to pay, which is kind of an insane amount. And that's how quickly you can roll into $40,000. All these people that are judging, if they have attended any wedding that is in like a normal venue and food was served to them and they got to drink drinks at the bar, I need you to know that that wedding cost probably at least $25,000. It is almost impossible to get anything under like 20K right now. Yeah. And that's why it doesn't make sense. I, I got to say this, right? You guys have to understand what's happening. Because a lot of people get married. And when you spend a lot for the wedding, I think it's something like, I'm gonna look, I gotta look up those numbers. I'm going to show it in a video. I think 45% of those people get divorced. And it's usually started by the woman. That divorce. Could you imagine? So she's spending all this money. The guy's stressing, blowing all this bread. And then he gets divorced six years later. When you know, you know. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? It's happened to a guy. I saw a guy talking about it. He said, you know, I just got married to this girl. The wedding, he was fine on that, right? But he made a lot of money. He probably paid for everything. And just to get divorced five years later. It's crazy. But it's happening. Raise your hand if you recently got married and feel broke. <sighs> Guys. I got married two weeks ago, three weeks ago almost, and we had this beautiful wedding and it wasn't even that expensive. I'm German, we got married in Germany and things here are much cheaper than in the US. But the mere fact that all my savings are gone and I even had to tap into my emergency fund and have like a small loan that I took out of about 1,500, 1,800 euros is killing me it's giving me so much anxiety and yes i know it's going to come back in with the next paycheck but i'm just like i have to start at zero so for all the 2024 brides yes spending the money is worth it you will have an amazing time but be mindful of the fact that it's just 24 hours and after those 24 hours you need to figure out <laughs> how to live life on a budget because girl the way I'm going to be window shopping for the rest of the year. Yeah. Wow. I know that I'll get way more questions like this the more I talk about my wedding, and rightly so, I'd probably be wondering the same thing. So first of all, let me just give you a little bit of context. 
let's go back to the day I got engaged. So we got engaged in October 2021. At that point, I was very much in denial about my debt. I probably wasn't as worse off in terms of how much debt I had, but I was still very much in denial, full on head buried in the sand. Same goes for my partner. He also didn't know the extent of my debt. So yeah, life just continued. We started saving for the wedding. I continued to spend like a crazy person. Then it got to a point where I was saving for the wedding, kind of up to my eyeballs, paying off debts. At that point, I had like loads of Klarna payments and all that buy now pay later stuff and i didn't even have like the extra money to be able to pay off my credit cards and like the loans and stuff that i had and i just had this realization that i have no money left like after all these payments i've just got myself in such a position where i'm really struggling i couldn't afford basically anything at that point like budgeting just wasn't in my vocabulary i just wasn't budgeting i was just spending my money i just saw my salary as money i could spend i felt like i was drowning and then I just had a mental breakdown and that's whenever I spoke to my fiance and yeah, I just told him everything about the debt, told him the extent of the debt and to be honest, that was like the first time I actually really looked it in the eye and properly sat down and went through my finances and realised how much debt I was actually in. So yeah, by that point, we'd already been saving for our wedding. We'd already put down a lot of deposits for our wedding. We just decided together that we would still continue to save and just go ahead with the wedding. And I've mentioned before, but saving has honestly changed the game for me. It's taught me so much. It's changed my mind mindset so so much yes saving for a wedding isn't ideal like i would like to be putting way more money towards the debt but it's just one of those things i just kind of have to get on with it then also we're not having a traditional wedding as such we're only having nine guests in Rome, very intimate small weddings, so it won't cost as much as the average wedding. Don't get me wrong, it's still costing way more than I thought it would, because there's all like those little hidden costs that you don't think about. And we're also incredibly fortunate that we're having our parents help us out as well. Yeah, really low key, chilled out wedding. And it's not just because I'm in debt that we're doing this, this is just something that we've always wanted to do. It just feels right for us. We've never really wanted the big wedding. I've had some comments like, I shouldn't go into married life in debt. I get it, but my partner is fully supportive. He supported me the whole way through this journey. Yeah, that's a bit of a roundup. Um, I probably will do way more videos about my wedding because it's what, like seven months away now. So yeah, that I mean, he's taking a big risk, you know, because you never know. She loves you now, but she may not love you later. I, I don't think guys should get married thinking that, right? You're gonna get married feeling like that's gonna get your best friend. I will do anything for her. I will lay down my life for her. But she already has debt, a lot of debt problems. What's going to happen? Those creditors are now going to be looking for you. He just adopted a bunch of debt. Now, it's a great thing. Yeah, he didn't have to adopt a kid <laughs> because that would be something different. But a debt, a much debt, like the way she was talking, that's just like having a baby. Something to think about. There is one financial regret I have in my almost 30 years of living. It would be spending $30,000 on a wedding. The wedding industry has all of us girlies in a chokehold, making us feel like we need to prove something to everyone around us and have this massive, expensive, beautiful wedding. I fell under that and became brainwashed and went from eloping and having something casual and under 5K to having this 30K wedding in San Francisco with only 50 people. At the end of the day, I look back at this and I think about how much of that money I could have used for something so much more valuable, like a honeymoon, investing. Good point. Paying for our businesses that we're trying to grow, anything. I know it's wedding season right now and I just want to put this out into the universe and if you're seeing this, it's probably a sign. If your wedding planning isn't about you and your spouse and it's about everybody else, don't do it. Just elope and save their money. How broke were you on your wedding day? I had $2,000 in my bank account. We were so broke that we couldn't afford a wedding gift to each other. There was this painting that a 17-year-old had created. It was only $200. And we had to ask a 17-year-old artist to give us a payment plan on his art. We paid $50 for like four months to be able to afford a wedding gift to each other. We didn't have on our wedding night because all of our other friends who couldn't really afford to come out that traveled all this way, they were all sleeping in our house. So we didn't want to be like, hey, we're going to, you know, go upstairs. It's our wedding night. We had to count the amount of cash we got from cards so that we could really ensure that we could afford our honeymoon. Man. As a newly engaged woman, I knew that weddings were expensive, but I didn't know that they were this expensive. I... Like, I understand, like, that some people can afford having a $100,000 wedding, and that's fine if you want to do that, but my question is, why, like, why, why? 
Honestly, I'm just like appalled that the wedding industry is this way. I just feel like it's just literally capitalism. Like I got a quote back from a wedding venue that didn't even include everything. And it only fit like 250 people or something like that. And we are having a big wedding, so I knew it would be more expensive. But they quoted me a minimum of $50,000. $50,000! And that literally wasn't even including like my dress. Obviously not including my dress. Also, how does one break to their parents who got married in the early 90s why weddings cost that much now? My parents' wedding was $2,000. I feel like things are just not adding up. Actually, they're adding up. This is just another random bridal thought today. You know, we do all this stuff. We're in so much debt, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of debt. For some of us, hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. And I just got so excited because my first item has been bought for my wedding registry. Like, I'm going to be paying this off for the next 10 years, but at least I got a $250 wine fridge. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. <laughs> He's excited. For a $250 wine fridge. This is sad, but this is real. This is real. I don't know if people talk about wedding regret. It really was the best day of my life, but that doesn't mean that I don't have room for other emotions too. One thing that's particularly taboo to talk about is money regret. In the US, it is wild how expensive the wedding industry has become. I live in California and between inflation and the wedding industry just charging more, a standard wedding on the coast of the US can easily run you over $100,000. And I'm not even talking like an over the top wedding. I am talking a standard wedding. I got married in January and our wedding was actually in South Africa because my husband is South African. And even though the dollar is so much stronger there, I still have financial regrets with how much we spent and specific aspects that I should have just scaled back. An example is the furniture that we had to hire in for the cocktail hour slash pre-drinks, whatever you call it. I opted for the highest end, most expensive furniture. It looked beautiful, but did I need to spend money on like the highest tier of furniture when to be honest on my wedding day, I didn't even notice it. My question for you guys is, do you have any financial regrets around your wedding? And if you do, what were the specific areas that you wish that you scaled back on? My wedding cost a little under $80,000. And if you asked anyone who got married in a luxury market, they will tell you their numbers were similar. The reason I shared that is because this is not normal. Weddings are so expensive and people have no idea how expensive they are. So I was just transparent about the pricing. I'm looking at my wedding planning Excel sheet, which has all of my vendor prices, how much we paid for everything. I'm all about financial transparency. With that being said, I wanted to answer some FAQs coming up. So in that $80,000, I counted every single thing that we did for our wedding from the second we got engaged until we sent out our thank you so that included our engagement party engagement photo shoot my nose job because i got a nose job for my wedding i wasn't shocked at the old days. our tips insurance taxes all of our vendor postage our thank you letters hotel blocks etc did we go into debt no and let me tell you why i had had a sinking fund for our wedding so if you're in a serious relationship you probably know that an engagement is coming so a sinking fund is essentially money you put aside for a big event or something you see coming up my fiance and i both had money saved from our individual sinking funds which totaled about forty thousand dollars then we got our actual vendor quotes and i'm not gonna lie i went into a full-blown panic spiral this was with about eight months of wedding planning left to go i was like there's no way we're going to be able to afford to do this but we got into action mode my husband and i both got second jobs. we were both working between 50 and 60 hours a week between our full-time jobs and our second job i wasn't making a steady stream of income on social media at the time so it was purely from working our off. Another thing I think a lot of people don't consider is you need to tip your vendor. They're all small business owners, so we tipped every single vendor. There are a lot of sneaky costs with wedding planning, a lot of things that sneak up on you, and especially if you live in a luxury market. I mean, we got married in the Napa Valley. I was quoted $30,000 for catering, so it ain't cheap. It's not right. And that's why I always talk about financial transparency with weddings on here. And keep in mind, I got engaged a year and a half before we actually got married, so I was actually honored into a lot of 2022 prices when I got married in 2023. So I can promise you if I got the exact same vendors now in 2024, 2025, it would probably be closer to 100K. No, I don't regret it. Yes, it was an amazing time. But now that we've drained our accounts and we're trying to save for a house and I'm trying to pay off my student loans, do I regret it? Yes and no. Our wedding day was literally perfect. Their are memories I will never forget. But just thinking about that number and conceptualizing it is painful. And had a big wedding always say if they could go back, they would just elope. 
So fun fact, um, couples who spend more than $20,000 on their wedding are 46% more likely to get divorced. I wonder why. And if you spend more than 10,000, it's somewhere in the ballpark of like 30%. Um, the goal is to stay under 10,000, optimally five. That's wild. You heard that? If you spend over, you're 40% more likely. If you spend under, you're 30%. What does that mean? The people that spend under are doing it for real love. They're not doing it for the wedding. Hence is what a lot of women are doing. They want that wedding, even that destination wedding. It's all a hoax. A man is losing in the end. He won't see it. He's playing that big wedding for her, but he's losing. If you're getting married soon, I'm here to remind you that there is so much inspiration out there and so much of like, you need to do this or your wedding's going to be bad or lame or whatever. Um, you don't need to do any of that. There's not like rules for what you need to have for your wedding day. And uh, you should just do what you want. Even if your in-laws don't want you to do that. Even if you feel like everyone is shouting at you that you need to do certain things. Just do what you want. Just do what you want. No one actually cares. And uh, the people that love you, really, really love you, are going to love whatever you decide to do. Whatever is going to be meaningful to you. My point exactly. So sometimes it's nice to do like Pinterest boards and inspiration. And sometimes you need to kind of shut that all out and just do what's true to you. Because there's a lot out there and it can be really overwhelming. And then wedding planning isn't fun anymore. And it should be fun. Anyway, I love you. Bye. And she said it right. And you got to be with a woman with that mindset. You see how she's just, oh, does it matter that she get married? That's the woman you want to marry. As explained, the ones over 10,000, 46%. The ones under 30. So with a woman like that, you're winning. It's probably like around 20 or something crazy like that. But still, they're getting married to be with you. And that's what you want. You don't want a woman like these other women spending 100,000. They don't realize they're causing problems in their life. Little do they know it, they got married just for the wedding. And more guys, because with the way weddings are nowadays and guys get women and divorce guys, no guy wants to get cute with a woman that's getting married for the wedding. Because guys already know that those numbers are high and they realize it's definitely more to life than getting with a woman like that. I wonder why they left.